Another sign that summer's end is here, the annual Labor Day Parade. Floats filled with proud union workers made their way down Queen Street this afternoon as thousands took part in the long weekend tradition. Amanda Ferguson now with the state of unions in the workplace today. Recent data giving union leaders something to dance about. I knew we had it in it. Canada's percentage of union dues paying workers ticked upward last year to almost 32% of all employees, an increase of 0.3 percentage points according to federal labor stats. This Labor Day is the most op optimistic Labor Day we've had in many, many decades for a variety of reasons. Our density is up slightly. And more importantly, of course, uh, after a year of getting rid of the Stephen Harper government, we're not being attacked by the federal government anymore. People, as the ones who are marching right down here, they've just, some of them work at Lens Crafters. They've just organized into a union because they want a voice at work. The, the hotels are organizing uh, because they want a voice at work. Happy Labor Day! Happy Labor Day! Support union! <laughs> and union leaders say their demographics are younger and more diverse than ever before. I grew up on a native reserve halfway up to Tobermory called Cape Croker okay. and uh, I moved to the city for education and fell into the trades and uh, it's my calling. I love my trade and I couldn't be any happier as a tradesman. There's lots of work yet to be done, I think especially in the private sector these days where union presence and density is so low. Only 15% of the private sector is unionized in Canada, compared to 75% of the public sector. This labor expert says the biggest cloud on the horizon for unions, the rise of precarious or part-time work. The challenges, though, I think are, are intense and, and they're growing. Uh, that 15% union density, I think, partly answers the question, how is it that there has been such a dramatic change in pension coverage and the quality of pensions in the private sector? Something union brass are vowing to march and fight for in the coming years. I'm very optimistic about the opportunity and the time frame that we're working, of course, trying to improve the, the lives of working people across this country. And there's likely more labor strain in the weeks to come. The union that represents auto workers is currently in the middle of talks with the Detroit Big Three car manufacturers. Amanda Ferguson, City News. for an increase in the minimum wage and a deal with the auto workers. We're at the end of 2016. I think we've done a pretty good job so far. Marching in celebration and solidarity, the labor movement takes center stage in Toronto. Good evening. It is an annual Labor Day tradition that held special interest for some groups this year. Auto workers in Oshawa are in a fight for their jobs, while other workers are hoping to raise the minimum wage. Our Colin DeMello was at the Labor Day parade and joins us live now at Queen's Park with the details. Colin. Yeah, good evening, Michelle. You know, uh, union leaders say there have been some steps forward, predominantly the improvements that are coming to the Canadian, Canadian pension plan. Still, though, there are pitched contract battles in this province. And today, a plea to the politicians here at Queen's Park to boost minimum wage in this province. <laughs> Marching through downtown streets, thousands of unionized workers celebrated the labor movement. A year that saw tough contract negotiations, but ultimately labor peace. How 2016 is going to shape up? I think we're at the end of 2016. I think we've done a pretty good job so far. But that depends on who you ask. Toronto's library workers narrowly averted a strike this year, while the city's unionized inside and outside employees say they had a tough round of bargaining as well. Mayor John Tory says 2016 was fair. These are people with whom um, I'd like to think we have a very reasonable relationship. We don't agree every day, but we sit down and we talk things through, and that's what this should be all about. The Labor Day Parade was also a solidarity movement behind the thousands of Ontario automotive workers who are fighting for new contracts. We're going to have settlements with all three of them. The only question is when. But on this Labor Day, politicians argue that more needs to be done for the workforce, that here in Ontario, the minimum wage should be raised to $15 an hour. Every worker should be able to pay the bills, 
and put the food on the table and the roof over their head, as well as put a little bit aside. Increased wages was what many in this parade were advocating for. In this economy now, it's, it's even tough just to get by. I mean, 15 bucks an hour, even with what I'm getting paid, uh, it's, it will help tremendous as a minimum wage. Uh, it should be there uh, right from the start. What's good for the worker, they say, is good for the economy, too. And what is happening right now is the big battle in uh, the Ontario's manufacturing sector. The workers in Ontario's auto sector are telling the big three automakers that this is it. They have until September 19th to come up with a contract or they could face potential strike action. Again, September 19th is that line drawn in the sand. Reporting live, I'm Colin DeMello. I'm back to you. Thank you, Colin. Yeah, you bet. Well, another big part of Labor Day in Toronto is the annual Labor Day parade. 25,000 people marched from the downtown core to the CNE this morning. Ellen Morrow was there and checked in on the state of labor in this country. It has all the trappings of any parade. The bands, the excitement. Happy Labor Day! But it also comes with a more serious message. It's important to recognize the sacrifices of workers that came before us and the things that they had, uh, they had done to make it so we have things that we take for granted. And workers say that recognition is becoming ever more important. This year's Labor Day Parade happens against the backdrop of difficult ongoing labor negotiations across various sectors of the Canadian workforce. After more than nine months of negotiations, Canada Post and its workers reached a tentative agreement last week. It means no job action for now, but critics warn that long-term kinks still need to be worked out. At the same time, negotiations have begun between Canadian auto workers and the big three North American auto makers. At stake, the union says possibly the future of plants in Oshawa and Windsor. The negotiations have been billed as the most important auto talks in a generation. Still, the president of the Canadian Labour Congress says it's a good time for the labour movement. I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic because I can see positive things being done. Those positive things? He says an ongoing workplace review by the Ontario government was the aim of improving employment standards and what some union bosses call a softening attitude at the federal level. Still, they say the challenges are not to be ignored. A rise in unstable work across the country and recent jobs numbers showing a decline in full-time employment. Ellen Morrow, CBC News, Toronto.